Okay, welcome to the second video in the lesson three. And this one... is going to be focused on radicals. Radicals are a subgroup of things called roots. And all a root is, is just the reciprocal of an exponent. I want to make sure I spell this right. Reciprocal of an exponent. Sorry, podium view got in the way there. So x squared, something squared, the reciprocal of that would be x to the one-half, which is the square root. That's where the word comes from. Cube root would be the reciprocal of x to the third, which is x to the one-half, which is the cube root. Now you notice that in the, while I was doing that, I wrote that little two on the first one there. This tells me which root it's a power, which root I'm dealing with. So if I gave you this, it'd be the fifth root, which would be x to the one-fifth. If there isn't a number present, it's going to be the square root, x to the one-half. It's just assumed that that's the one that we're dealing with. And that's going to be the one that we focus on. I'm not going to really get into cube roots or fourth roots or fifth roots. We're only going to focus on square roots. And, if, and before we get into that, I'm going to take you back a little bit further in, uh, into elementary school. I'm going to give you the number 72. And I'm going to ask to, find, to make a factoring tree where you'd say how, well, what times what gives me 72? Well, 8 times 9 would give me 72. Well, 8 I can break down into 4 and 2, and 9 can go down to 3 times 3. 4 can break down again into 2 times 2. So my whole factorization of 72 will be 2, the 1, 2, 3 power, times 3 to the second. This is called prime factorization. Which means we're getting down to the prime numbers. What we're going to do to simplify radicals is called square factorization. Okay, so pull up a new sheet and we're going to do square root of 72. How could we break that down? Anytime you see that square root sign, if it would help you out, off to the side of your paper, I would recommend you write 1 through 10 squared. So let's do that. 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, 100. Occasionally, you might have to go beyond 10 squared, but this is a good spot to start. Now, so let's make a list of our steps. So first, 1 through 10 squared. Even if you think you have them memorized, I want you to still write them out, because that way you can see them in front of you. 
second. Find the largest perfect square that goes into your number evenly. And the reason why I always pick 72 is because everyone always starts with, everyone always does 8 times 9. But there is a larger number that goes into 72 that's a perfect square. And that's that one right there. So watch how I write this. I'm going to put my perfect square out front and my non-perfect square in the back. I'm going to do square root of 36 times square root 2. 36 times 2 gives me 72. Now, reduce perfect square. Well, the square root of 36 I know is 6. And I'm going to leave the other one alone. Alright, so let's go through this again, uh, the steps again, before I give you another couple practice ones. I have 1 through 10 squared written here. I want to find the largest one of these that divides evenly into 72. And the largest one that does that is 36. 36 divided by 72 is 2. Well, 72 divided by 36 is what I meant to say. 36 can reduce to 6. Square root of 2 is going to stay alone. So let me give you another couple ones to try. Square root 75. This one's a little bit easier. Well, I've got my 1 through 10 squared. Perfect square, non-perfect square. Largest perfect square that goes that divides evenly into 75 is 25. And 25 times what gives me 75? Well, it's 25 times 3. Square root of 25 I know is just 5. So it's 5 times radical 3. Square root of 162. The process for these is the same no matter what you do. Perfect square, non-perfect square. Largest one, this time is 81. And it's 81 times 2. Square root of 81 is 9, and I leave the radical 2 alone. Once I reduce this square root sign on the perfect square, it's gone. So, and that's pretty much just how you reduce radicals. Now, there are a couple other things that we need to go over. So pull up another page. Let's say you had something like this. Let's say you were doing a problem out and this came to be your final answer. Are you done? And the answer is yes. Alright, these cannot combine further. Because There are different radicals. I 
I can multiply these. Now, when I multiply them, 8 times 3, and the 8 and the 3, since they're outside of the radical, stay outside of the radical. 8 times 3 is 24. 5 times 2 are inside radicals, therefore they're going to stay inside radicals, which is 10. Then I need to double check to make sure it doesn't reduce. If it does, it's the same process as before. So let me give you another example. 3 radical 3 times 4 radical 6. 3 times 4 is 12, and 3 times 6 is 18, but 18 can reduce. So off to the side here, I'm going to do my reducing of 18. Well, it's 9 times 2, which is 3 times square root of 2. This goes in place of the square root of 18. So it becomes 12 times 3 square root 2, which is 36 square root of 2. So if they're under the radical, you can multiply them together, keep them under the radical, check to see if it reduces. If they are outside of the radical, they're going to stay outside of the radical. And that's it for radicals, so thank you, and I'll see you in the final video of this lesson, Scientific Notation.